Hey everybody, thanks for uh, stopping by the channel. My name's Chuck, and I uh, appreciate you uh, taking a few minutes to uh, come by and see me. Uh, let's uh, flip off to a quick little video here. Well, I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, the Enco uh, Hot Deals catalog came, and I was paging through it, and uh, I'd never seen this before. I don't know if it's uh, new to it or not, but there is uh, Metalworking Sink or Swim, Tom Lipton's book. Uh, pretty cool. I didn't uh, ever see this listed here before. Um, if it's new, congrats, Tom. I hope your sales work great. But I thought that was cool. I, hey, I know that guy. Anyway, I thought I'd share that guy with you. And uh, hey, someday maybe uh, someday maybe screwy balls will be in here. Hmm. Not. Okay, we're back from that little video. Um, I thought that was pretty unique, seeing uh, Ox Tool Tom in the uh, Enco magazine. I yeah, hope you enjoyed seeing that. And uh, let's uh, flip to another quick video here that I did back in June 12th, 2013. I just can't believe how much time has gone by. Uh, this is our power feed. How much of Italian style. <laughs> so you see uh, that uh, my Italian style power feed. Well, that's that was my early days back uh, after I met Chewy. Uh, you know, he's a retired machinist toolmaker, and uh, we were trying to put a nice finish on that pool cue uh, because it had a taper, and uh, I was quite proud of myself coming up with that idea. Uh, of using the uh, drill and the extension to uh, get a power feed. And uh, it was funny that day, I know Chewy looked at me quizzically like, oh my god, how do you figure it out to do that? Um, which I always like trying to impress my mentor. So with that said, the other day I was watching a YouTube video and uh, it was uh, Stefan Gotzwinter. Winter. Um, he does a lot of neat builds and uh, go on, excuse me, stop. We're gonna, we're gonna pause for a second so I can get rid of my buddy Howie. Go, go, go lay down. Go lay down, go. Okay, we're back from that pause. So as I was saying, I was watching Stefan's channel and he does a lot of neat, neat builds, um, exceptional builds. And he was uh, showing his uh, idea designed for creating a power feed for the compound uh, using a drill and uh, watching that spurred me on to come out and complete what I never finished uh, when I did mine back in 2013 so I uh, hope you enjoy the video uh, it's my idea of how to do something uh, there's a variety of ways on what to do and of course uh, Mr. Bozo came by to see me, and uh, we got to start off the new year right with uh, good old Mr. Bozo. Uh, but I managed to, uh, I think, shoo him back out the door the best I could. So I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, like always, uh, plan on seeing me next Screwy Tuesday. Take care. Okay, we're over here at my lathe, and here's the handle for my compound. And a uh, quick little story first, as you can see, there's two, two handles on it. And my buddy Chewy, who you saw in the, uh, we heard his voice in the earlier uh, video um, of uh, our power feed. Every time he comes over and uses my lathe, he barks that there's two handles. Just take one of those handles off. He goes, it's, it doesn't allow you to spin freely. Well, of course, I'm a hardhead and I ain't taking nothing off my lathe. So... That's a little backstory with my buddy Chewy. So I, I was daydreaming about making a drive for this um, because when you use a socket on the nut here, as you reverse the feed, more often than not, if it's if it hits a little hard, it'll pop the the uh, nut loose. So I was daydreaming about it, and I says, "Well, I've got these two handles." So I kind of came up with an idea that I was going to do this, and make a plate that would uh, be slotted to sit over these two handles 
and then go ahead and make an attachment on that plate that it could make that it could drive. Well, when I came out to look at doing this, um, coming up with some thought, um, I looked and I went, wait a minute, my uh, handle there is already drilled and tapped. It's already drilled and tapped for 1032. So I can leave these guys alone and I can make an attachment right there. Relatively pretty simple. So, um, dug around in the scrap box and where did I put, oh here it is. And uh, grabbed a piece of metal that I'm going to use. It's, uh, it's a nice width for there. And then uh, you can see I got my, since I have my Dicom bottle brush fixed, no more barking about that. I got some Dicom on there and uh, laid out the, uh, the uh, circumference and, uh, or the radius and got me a center point there. So I'll go over and uh, cut and grind these and get it, get it uh, to fit here. And then you can see here in the background, um, I've got a, uh, a set of transfer punches. So I'll go ahead and put the transfer punches in the hole hold it up there, give it a little love tap, and that'll give me my hole centers. Uh, and then I can drill and then uh, use the uh, 1032s to attach. So let me get that uh, kind of uh, set up and then uh, I'll be back. You don't need to watch me uh, grind and drill, I don't think. Okay, what the hell. We're over here. thought I'd go ahead and show you my little Burr King. This is a Burr King uh, model 562. I love the machine. I put a foot pedal on it so I don't have to reach over and operate the switch, um, but uh, I don't know that I'm happy with the foot pedal because it kind of makes it a little bit uh, uncomfortable sometimes to use. But uh, And you'll see, I don't know if it's, the foot pedal uh, actually starts it with a slow start for some reason also, but let's, let's give it a go. Cut this and grind the other side. Well, here's a setup on my porta band. Uh, I did a video on this guy. Uh, I love it. This blade has been in here since November of uh, 2013. Um, bimetal blade, I think it's a 1014 blade, and I, I generally come over and use this saw in this setup more than I go and use my large Powermatic. One of the main things is a $10 blade. Back in the back room, a $60, $65 blade. So uh, if I'm going to douche a blade doing something stupid, I'd rather do it on a, on a uh, $10 blade or whatever they call it, a little over $10. Anyway, Got a foot pedal on this guy also, and uh, I love it. Okay, a little cleanup uh, 
deburr it and uh, we'll get the screws uh, laid out on it. Okay, I think you can see I got the transfer screws in there. Just going to do a little eyeball line up on it. I'm liking that. Probably could have put the screws in a little deeper. And I got my two marks. So I can go ahead and drill those out. I'll just show you real quick the the tool for the transfer tool um, not only is a driver for ins installation and removal but you also store the uh, transfer screws in the body of the unit makes it kind of cool so you're not looking for uh, everything and then it's written on the side the size of the screw that's coming in uh, focus there okay I have the plate mounted and uh, my plan is, is to take an extra 3 8 drive socket that I have. I've bored the hole so it fits it. And I'm going to cut it to size so that it just uh, is just proud of the handles. And then weld it into place. Um, I think that's going to work. I was thinking about just, I could have just welded a, a, a bolt head here. But I wanted to get away from the handles so that... Uh, if I have to use a universal on it, uh, it won't be fighting the handles at all. So that's my plan. So uh, bring it back after it's put together. Well, the good news is uh, my welds are looking better. The bad news is Bozo uh, did a nice job welding. As you can see, I went a little heavy on the first tack and it pulled it even though I had it down in a vise and it's crooked so gonna fix it well I fixed it Mr. Bozo visits my shop enough uh, <laughs> you gotta learn how to how to kick him back out and correct what he uh, he did for you but uh, it's done um, put some uh, Sherlock uh, thumb screw tops on the Allen heads so I can just take it off with my fingers, don't have to use wrenches. And uh, got it set up with a 3 8 drive and uh, works well. I can, uh, got a little wobble in it, but I'm going to live with it. So that's it. Um, you can end up uh, using a long extension like I did in the other video. Um, so I thought I'd show it to you. It's a nice addition to the lathe. And uh, there's very many options that you could use for doing something like this uh, if you want to do it on your own. So just sharing an idea. Uh, thanks for viewing and uh, Happy New Year to everybody.